हाई एवरीबाडी वेरी 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 वॉम वेलकम टू वेदांत जे इंग्लिश चैनल दिस इज योर मास्टर टीचर नवोमिता भट्टाचार्जी एंड टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस द चैप्टर मेटोलॉजी येस सो बिकॉज वी आर डूइंग दिस चैप्टर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई हैव एन टेकन अ सेशन ऑन दिस चैप्टर इन दिस चैनल दैट इज वाई आई हैव एक्चुअली रिटर्न मोस्ट ऑफ द नोट्स हियर ओके सो दैट इट बिकम्स ईजियर फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड इट एंड यू नो वी कैन ईजीली गेट डन विद इट विद इन अ लेस टाइम ओके विथ taking less duration of time because i really do not want to waste your time you have your exams coming up almost there right anyway so as you all know my name is nobumita bhattacharjee however most of the students call me nobita ma'am and ready get set go let's start with our chapter metallurgy okay now what exactly is metallurgy when we come to this topic of metallurgy first we have to understand that what exactly is metallurgy as you can see it's written here that metallurgy basically it's a technological and scientific process by which metal can be extracted from its ore right so metals are usually you know maybe found under the ground or somewhere else so you have to extract it you have to bring it out from the ore that is metallurgy now when we study this chapter metallurgy or the topic of metallurgy there are some terms that we have to know okay and these are the very basic terms in this chapter that we have to have to know otherwise we are not going to understand it so let's bring it on everybody firstly what is a mineral in metallurgy these this word mineral 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 it keeps repeating itself so what exactly is a mineral let's understand that now mineral is actually naturally occurring solid substance that metal in in which metals are present in combined state or na native state native state as in uh, you know the noble metals the noble metals like gold silver they are very less reactive right so you will find them existing as it is and that is called as the nat native state correct now what is ore ore is the mineral from which metal can be economically and conveniently extracted okay from which the metal can be economically and conveniently extracted okay for example um, a candle let's say we take a candle okay now i have burned the candle the candle has melted i know i can melt it again and bring it back to the sh bring it back to the same shape again right but do you think it is economical for me or rather i will just go uh, you know go out and uh, spend 20 rupees and get another candle but do you think that me melting the candle on my gas again and then using my hard work there is is it convenient i'm going to utilize the gas stove i'm going to heat up my uh, you know my my pan or something the pan is going to get dirty and then i'll be making it it's it's just not convenient right rather i can go out and just spend 20 rupees and bring another one what's the point of using so much of you know a hard work or it's such a tedious job so you understand but if it was easy the easier part is is you know economically and conveniently that's what we are meaning okay now here is something that's very important is all ores are minerals but all minerals are not ore you understand yes all ores are minerals but all minerals are not ores got it now there is another term called gang or matrix gang or matrix what is this impurities the impurities that are present with the ore the impurities that are present with the metal they are known as gang or matrix got it clear this much is very easy right this is just the beginning huh? just the beginning that's why it's easy now there is something called as flux impurity and slag let's understand the difference many students have seen that they get confused about what is flux what is impurity so understand my dear student that impurity is what is with the metal already impurity is what is with the metal already what you are doing is you are adding something externally you are going to add something by yourself and that is going to be called as flux okay for example see you have a dirty cloth let's say that you have a dirty cloth the dirty cloth already has dust in it right the dirty cloth already has dust in it so that becomes your impurity now what did you do you added some detergent powder on it but obviously normally when you wear clothes you don't keep detergent powder in your pocket and stuff right you don't keep it isn't it do you need detergent powder in your pocket and like walk around like you want detergent powder take it you want detergent powder take it no you don't do that normally you don't wear a cloth with detergent right so you are adding the detergent powder that is your flux 
and together what do you do in your washing machine don't you drain the water yes that water is also not required right so together the dirt and the detergent powder they form that micellar formation remember we studied in our lower class in 10th grade and all of these so they form those micellar structures and everything and that is something that we you know take it out we wash it away exactly that part is your slag okay that part is your slag understanding that part is your slag now flux it is an external impurity added to remove the impurity that is already present i have just told you and what is slag slag is a fusible mask okay it is a fusible mask it is it also has low melting point less density and it is immiscible with the molten it is immiscible with the molten metal so understand this my dear student now when you have put your clothes in the washing machine you are expecting it to become cleaner you are expecting it to become cleaner what if the water in which detergent and the dust is there what if it could seep into the water and make it dirty again would you want to use a washing machine then no so same thing here what happens to the micellar structures they are also floating around right and they are supposed to be pushed out same thing here as slag also got it clear okay now let's understand the sequence of events acha even if you can't see the colors no problem i'll be providing you the notes these notes are hand written it's written by me so you will be getting it okay you will be getting it don't worry if you can't see it right here just under just try to listen to me after that you will anyway be getting the notes so don't worry about it so sequence of events what happens first what happens next that's what we're going to understand so the first and the foremost thing that you're going to do is you're going to mine okay you're going to bring the metal out okay bring the metal or the mineral out once you bring the mineral out now what you're going to do is now what you are going to do go for pulverization what is pulverization pulverization is basically crushing or grinding it okay Pr crushing or grinding it properly after crushing or grinding it then what do you do you concentrate or enrichment or dressing of ore basically what you do is in that crushing or grinding there was definitely a lot of impurities present right so those impurities what you are going to do is you are going to separate the impurities basically you are going to keep the metal a little more in the amount and the impurities are you know kept aside okay now while you do this while you are doing this concentration enrichment or dressing of ore what are you doing you have two ways to separate the impurities what are the two two ways physical and chemical of course now in physical you have 1 2 3 4 four methods okay what are those hand picking what does hand picking mean pick it up with your hand pick it up with your hand basically pick it up with your hand and throw it away that's hand picking now hand picking you know what uh, because i used to teach the lower classes so everything is like literally fresh in my mind so i can tell you even in the lower grades in class 6th or 7th we studied about hand picking and we realized that hand picking is not a very optimal way to separate substances why because a it needs the impurities to be bigger in size so that you can see it with your naked eye and you can pick it up and remove it right b it is very time consuming so nobody wants to do it so nobody wants to do it so these are the two uh, you know disadvantages of hand picking okay hand picking we are not going to focus on because it's very easy and let's face it no one in uh, in in je is going to ask you something related to hand picking right we will focus more on magnetic separation hydraulic washing and froth flotation all of these are actually self explanatory however we are going to explain the notes are all there don't worry about it now chemical process is leaching that is also something that we are going to understand A very simple uh, word you know very simple word leaching you know what a leach is right leaches you know right when they get attached to your skin and they start sucking the blood what do you do you basically like you know just take them away and throw them away and then put some salt on them so that they die so kind of like that only the process is we will see we will see don't worry about it we will see now moving on conversion of ore into metal oxide now that you have got enriched concentrated ore what you going to do is you are going to convert the ore into metal oxide because now we are almost there once we get the metal oxide it's very easy to just remove the oxide part and have our metal right so for that we have the very 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 famous two words that we have in this whole chapter calcination roasting calcination roasting everybody knows about it so that's what we are going to do after that we are going to reduce the metal oxide to metal of course okay we are going to reduce the metal oxide to metal and for that also we have 
four uh, we have a lot of processes actually four to five processes there is smelting self reduction electrolytic reduction and etc then there is purification where you have liquidation pulling zone refining electrolytic refining all of that is present so shall we begin one by one let's understand all of it chal now ores can be of two types like i already said yes you have elemental ores and you have combined ores in case of combined ores you have oxidized ore where you have oxides and you have the oxo acids as well in case of oxo acids you have carbonate sulfate phosphate nitrate all of these and then in combined ore you also have sulfide ore halide ore halide you know right fluorine chlorine all of that yes they, those are combined with the ore right in sulfide you can understand oxidized you know oxygen is added to it so these are the major different kinds of ore now something that is very important is uh, which which uh, you know every year there is a question related to it is important ores of metal direct question direct question you will get if this is the metal what is the ore or if this if this is the ore then what is the metal not of course that will be very easy question but you will be asked uh, you know what is the formula of this ore or this is the formula write the name of the ore that might come so let's just understand aluminium the most important one is bauxite it is al2o3.2h2o actually you can write it as xh2o but 2 is the most common one so let's write 2h2o now iron has hematite that is fe2o3 magnetite fe3o4 now a lot of people a lot of students actually they get confused saying that hematite magnetite both of them have feo feo how can we remember that one is 2 3 one is 3 4 go by alphabetical order alphabetical order h comes first right h comes first and numerically wise 2 and 3 comes first so h 2 3 m comes later m will be 3 4 understood okay okay then you have siderite that is feco3 and you have iron pyrite fes2 okay all right these are the ones now we go to copper copper has copper pyrite same iron pyrite fes2 copper pyrite cu fes2 copper glance is cu2s s glance s glancey similar similar so copper glance cu2s cuprite cu2o malachite cu co3 dot cuh2 cu oh2 sorry not h2 zinc zinc blend zns it is also called as sphalerite it is also called as sphalerite so copper glance sphalerite s for s right s is there cus copper glance zns sphalerite you can remember it like that okay calamine znco3 and zincite zno now three most important carbonates okay three most important carbonates you have siderite okay uh, calamine and you have malachite how can we remember it so this is just my mnemonic that how i remembered it and it is uh, what was it my lucky calzone is d right okay my lucky calzone d right my lucky calzone calzone d right is d right okay ha huh, is d right which means my lucky calzone is d right that means malachite my lucky malachite malachite okay malachite then calamine calamine is for zinc calamine zinc malachite copper okay all right is d right siderite siderite is for iron that's how we remember it okay that's how i remembered it my lucky calzone is d right that means my lucky malachite copper calamine zinc and siderite is iron okay that's how we remember it now moving on there are some more lead the most famous one is galena pbs silver argentite ag2s mercury cinnabar ags tin is tin stone very easy tin stone or cassiterite sno2 okay now let's start with separation where are we coming right now let's take check it out okay so now pulverization you all know that basically you just have to crush it and grind it that's all that we're doing now concentration enrichment or dressing so hand picking like i said is very easy you just pick it up with your hand and throw it okay 
magnetic separation we are coming to magnetic separation so let's understand what is the basic principle of magnetic separation you are going to ask me ma'am what are you asking it's such a easy question of course it's going to be different magnetic properties so either the impurity is magnetic or the ore is magnetic right but there is a difference in magnetic properties now you might ask me what if impurity and the ore if both are magnetic then we can't use this then we cannot use this process at all right we will have to use some other process we cannot use it either of the two has to be magnetic if both of them are magnetic we can't use it okay so what we do is we use this machine this is a magnetic roller in here in here we are going to put the finely grounded ore the ore also has impurities in it right yes the ore also has impurities in it although it is concentrated ore but impurities are still present now once the ore goes here see this is the magnetic roller what happens is the magnetic particles they get attached to it and they fall right here the magnetic particles they get attached to the roller and they fall right here okay and those the particles which are not magnetic they go jump right into this separated easy separated right so these are the non magnetic particles these are the magnetic particles magnetic particles can be the ore can be the impurities that depends on whatever it is okay all right understood that's it that's it <laughs> see one one process is done now let's go to hydraulic washing which is also called as levigation or it is called as gravity separation do remember the name because uh, going forward there are a lot of places where they have used the gravity separation name or they have used the levigation name okay might get confused so please do remember it that hydraulic washing is also called as levigation it is also called as separ gravity separation i only forgot anyway <laughs> chal moving back moving forward sorry yeah What is the basic principle here? The basic principle here is density difference. One is heavy, one is not heavy. Okay, one is heavy, one is not heavy. As in lighter. But most of the time, what we see is the ores are the ones that are heavy. So that means that it can be used for iron, it can be used for lead, it can be used for uh, tin. These are heavy metals, right? For those metals, you use this process. <clears throat> so what you do here is. See the crushed ore is right here. Okay, I'm not too tall, but you have to figure it out. Okay, here the crushed ore is, crushed ore is, crushed ore is entering this part here. Okay, now you're going to ask me, man, what is this? What is this tape? Uh, this this thing, right? What is this machine? We can't understand. Very easy, very easy. You have a funnel shaped where the ore through which you are pushing the grinded ore, right? And you have a table like this. You have a table like this. Now the table has lot of corrugations. Corrugations as in a lot of stoppage, right? Like one, then there is another one here, maybe. Okay, then there is another one like this. It's an inclined one. So here, when you are putting the ore from the side, what you are doing is you are also spraying jet. Okay, like zoom, like this, water is coming. The ore and the water. Now what is happening is the heavier particles they are just sticking. They are sticking. Like they are getting, they are getting settled here at this place. See corrugation, right? here you have a here you have a spike kind of thing where this metals are getting the metals are getting uh, this thing metals are getting deposited here however the lighter particles they are they are getting washed by the water and they are coming here okay they are coming here so the gang that is impurities with the water are getting deposited here whereas the metal this sloping table with the corrugated boards here is where your metals are getting deposited got it that's it that's it understood this chalo moving on then okay moving on uh here th this this one is particularly used for hematite magnetite azurite malachite and um, calamite okay remember that chalo moving on now let's understand froth flotation process the name suggests that basically we want froth have you seen how somebody makes cold coffee cold coffee have you seen cold coffee basically what you do is you use some milk you you take some ice take some coffee powder take some sugar and grrr in the mixer grinder on the top you see a lot of froth don't you see a lot of froth what is happening because you are stirring it because you are stirring it it is producing a lot of froth but that also means that there are there were some air particles which are coming up right the air particles were coming up so exactly like this here is also something like that is only happening you first take ore oil and water what did i say you are taking three things ore plus oil 
plus water. These are the three things that you are taking here. Huh? Now what you are going to do is you are going to you are also going to add some air to it. Also going to add some water, air to it. Okay. And then obviously it will get stirred or something like that so that froth is formed. Froth is formed. Now you must have seen that in cafes when you are making it at home if you are making the cold coffee at home you are going to use only these ingredients. But if you go to a cafe and you are asking cold coffee they are definitely going to use some whipped cream and, uh, whipped, whipped cream and something like that so that the froth looks even a little more right. So that the froth looks even more even even more and then you find it very pretty so you start clicking pictures on Instagram to post right. Exactly like that here also what we do is we try to keep the froth a little more. And that is why what we do is sometimes we use activators here. Okay, sometimes we use activators so that once the froth is formed, it does not settle down. It does not settle down. We want the froth, you know, we want them to froth a little more. So we use some activators so that it remains there and then we can easily separate it out. Okay, now, so diff now what is the basic principle here? The basic principle is the ores, they have differential wettability. As in the metal is probably wetted by the oil, whereas the impurities are probably wetted by the water. Again, I will come back to the uh, same example of this micellar structure. Do you remember that there was a hydrophobic part and hydrophilic part? Same thing, bacha. See, if I use a collector here called sodium ethyl xanthate or potassium ethyl xanthate, I can use these kind of collectors where you have a hydrophobic part and you have a hydrophilic part. What do they do? They increase the adsorbent. Okay, they increase the adsorption rate. How? See, understand. If I make a make an oil droplet here, and let's say that these particles they are getting attached here. So when they are getting attached here, what will happen? The hydrophilic part will be this side towards the water, and the hydrophobic part will be this side, right? The hydrophilic part will be facing the water, hydrophobic part will be facing the water, facing the oil. Now what will happen is whatever is there the impurities impurities or or the you know or these uh, metals right the ores what will happen is wh whoever the ore that is that is you know hydrophilic in nature it will get attached here the part of the ore that is hydrophobic in nature it will get attached here so what is it doing it is increasing the tendency of the increasing the tendency of wetting right it is increasing the tendency of wetting or what whoever was like you know no i don't want to be froth you know whoever was settled down that they said that no no i don't want to be a froth yeah i'm fine here so what this what did this collector do this collector was like no no <laughs> like you not know, this and like you have to go up so what they did was the collector basically the the work of the collector is to get together the ores or get together the metals which are not becoming of froth collect it and then push it upwards to become a froth. Collect it and then push it upwards to become a froth. Now understand this that froth flotation process it is mostly it is mostly used for you know uh, sulphide ores right PBS or ZNS. Now what if there are two ores present I mean what if there are there is two metals that are present okay PBS and ZNS what will you do what will you do have you seen till 10th everybody is in the same section right everybody is equal equal and then after 10th after your boards what happens somebody goes to science somebody goes to commerce somebody goes to arts right you all are getting separated some of you are very motivated like no no I have to take science I have to take science I have to crack IIT I have to crack need something like that right you are very motivated and some of you are not very motivated you're like it's okay it's okay if it doesn't happen so what if it doesn't happen, it's fine, I'll do something else. People are like that also, right? So let's say that what you're going to do is, yes, what you're going to do is, rather, let's say that PBS is the, is the motivated child. PBS is the motivated child. He or she wants to crack JE and like, no, no, I have to do something great with my life. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But ZNS is not so much, right? Now, usually what happens is we have to provide you motivation that kids, you have to study, exam is coming nearby and all of this. But here what is happening is we are sending a depressant here. We are giving it a depressant. 
so that whoever is motivated let them go forward but whoever is not so much motivated like you know what you just you just stay back yeah you just stay back it's fine it's fine you just stay back stay back so a depressant will depressant will do what this the the if there are two if there are two right pbs and zns right so the depressant will do what the depressant will try to target one of them have a reaction and separate it the depressant will go inside try to have a try to have a reaction here and separate it out see for example when pbs the depressant the type of re depressants are you have nacn na2co3 all of these so when pbs tries to react with nacn no reaction so pbs will definitely form a froth and it will go up right but zns it reacts with nacn and forms like this okay it forms a compound like this and na2s is also separated out so this cannot form froth this cannot form froth, froth okay all right activators ha huh, froth stabilizers froth stabilizers are also crisol and aniline like i said right one sometimes what happens is have you noticed that if you have washed your clothes let's say that you have washed your clothes if you keep the washing machine on for some time but it's not getting it's not rotating i'm so sorry give me some time i need to drink a little bit of water and there is no water as well i'm just doing this hmm. <coughs> yeah so what happens is sometimes um, let's say that you have washed the clothes but you forgot to drain the water initially when you are put surfexel there was a lot of froth but after a while what happens the water gets all stable the water looks like it's fine like there is nothing in it same thing might happen here also but we don't want that if that happens then we will not be able to separate the separate the ore right we will not be able to separate the metal so that is why we use this froth stabilizers like cresol or aniline something like that okay moving on everybody now we come to our chemical method which is leaching see it is the process by which the required substance that is ore or impurity is dissolved out from the ore by using a suitable reagent what you're doing is you have you have the ore plus impurity okay you just add required substance okay so that you can dissolve out the ore from the impurity same thing i told you see if a leach is on your body what do you have to do maybe you can't just tear it apart like this just add some salt to it it will just do all of that and it will come out right same thing same thing you just added a required substance to it it formed a compound and separated out now see the reaction here especially for al2o3 bauxite ore right the impurities that are there are sio2 fe2o3 or tio2 right now sio2 it's it's a major impurity in white bauxite and fe2o3 it's a major impurity in red bauxite now see bayer's process we will be doing it uh, in some time later as well but take a look at it al2o3 there are impurities impurities are sio2 fe2o3 tio2 now then what you do is you add some concentrated sodium hydroxide 40% or 45% concentrated sodium hydroxide when you add what do you get you get aloh4 which is soluble is here but the impurities come out as it is it forms a compound al2o3 right it reacted with sodium hydroxide formed a compound here came out as soluble but the impurities just remained as it is so you can just filter them out that's your bayer's process but we will understand it in a little better manner don't worry then there is also something called as hydrometallurgy hydrometallurgy you take Ag ag2s and then you take impurities you can either add nacn or you can add kcn whatever okay then what will you get you will get agcn2 which is soluble and and you will get na2s or k2s based on your, if you have taken nacn or you have taken kcn all right you will get this outside got it so this is your hydrometallurgy this this part is basically leaching okay leaching chalo moving on now that we have we are done with ore dressing concentration enrichment okay let's move forward and let's understand how can we convert the ore into a metal oxide how can we do it the most famous two words that we all know calcination roasting calcination roasting so calcination what happens in cal calcination is the concentrated ore is heated strongly just below its melting point just below its melting point otherwise it will melt it will become molten you don't want that we want it just before the melting point in absence or limited supply of air 
absence or limited supply of air how will you find absence or limited supply of air basically what you're going to do is you're going to heat the you're going to heat the chamber where you're going to do the calcination so that the air becomes hot and it rises up we know that hot air is lighter right so it goes up and that way the air is not there or it is lesser in amount limited amount of air right so it, it is mostly used for carbonates so you have metal carbonate heat it you will get metal oxide and carbon dioxide okay also hydrated hydrated ores or hydro oxides they are converted into anhydrous oxides see Fe2O3 dot 3H2O. What do you get? Limonite. This is called. This is another ore, huh? This is another ore. Limonite. That I hadn't. I haven't written it there, but you can just take it. Uh, check it out. Okay. Fe2O3 plus 3H2O. All right. Then you have uh, AlOH3. If you heat it, you will get Al2O3 plus H2O. The product formed is always porous. Remember it. The product formed here is always, always, always porous. Let's move towards roasting. what happens is roasting in roasting in this process the concentrated ore is heated strongly first below its melting point same thing same sentence but in presence of air this time this time in presence of air not absence or limited air okay it's in presence of air it is mainly apply ap applicable for sulfide ores okay now metal sulfide plus o2 what will happen metal oxide plus sulfur dioxide sometimes what happens is if you have a if you have a metal in its lower oxidation state when you go for roasting they they go into higher oxidation state for example fe o plus o2 it will give you fe2o3 it will give you fe2o3 okay now impurities like sulfur arsenic antimony they are removed in the form of volatile oxides what happens is they just react with the oxygen okay they react with the oxygen slightly all right they react with the oxygen slightly and they are very volatile in nature so they just they just fly away they just fly away okay and then again here also product formed are always porous do we understand this we do now let's move on towards reduction of the metal oxides to get our metal so here we have smelting what do we do in smelting in smelting what do we do is it's carbon reduction method so we have to use something that has carbon rich so we can take coke we can take charcoal or we can take coal okay then what we will do is see we have the metal oxide zno plus carbon what do we get zinc plus carbon monoxide we if we take carbon monoxide then we will get carbon dioxide so basically what we are getting is you have the metal oxide plus a reducing agent the reducing agent can be carbon or it can be carbon monoxide then we find the metal and the reducing agent oxide okay we are getting the reducing agent oxide cool then we also have reduction by hydrogen see you can uh, see here tungsten oxide plus 3h2 you're getting the tungsten metal and then water for nickel also you can do it you will get the same thing then there is a self reduction method or self reducing method check it out what happens here is no redu reducing agent is used from the external okay you are not going to add anything but what will happen is see pbs reacts with oxygen it will form pbo and sulfur dioxide right now what we will do is you will take the same pbs take the pbo and it will again give you metal and sulfur dioxide that's it that's it it is also called as auto reduction self reduction whatever you want to call it you are, that's fine now we go for thermite process which is also called as goldsmith thermite process you can take titanium oxide cr2o3 mn3o4 fe2o3 and you are going to take aluminum powdered aluminum but powdered what will you get you are going to get al2o3 plus titanium chromium manganese or iron yes aluminum will react with the o3 part the oxygen part it will form al2o3 and then you will you are going to get the metal cool moving on you also have thermal reduction what is thermal reduction what do you understand by it self explanatory heat it get the metal so this is basically some metal oxides they are so thermally unstable that the moment you start heat, heating them a little bit what happens is you get the metal for example hgo mercury oxide just heat it you will get mercury separated and oxygen separated that's it that's it very easy right then we have metal replacement method nothing much 
displacement reaction basically it's like the displacement reaction see cuso4 plus fe feso4 plus cu so a more reactive metal can replace another metal from its solution that's it that's displacement reaction only right that's it then we have something called as electrolytic reduction in case of electrolytic reduction what happens metals of high reactivity such as sodium potassium ma magnesium calcium aluminium right they are not reduced by carbon why because they can form carbides all right plus what you have to do is this reaction requires that you take an inert atmosphere otherwise what they will do you know that sodium potassium <coughs> magnesium <coughs> sorry they can all react with oxygen right they can all react with oxygen also so that is also not feasible for us and that is why we will have to go for electrolytic reduction see how you can extract sodium how you can extract so sodium you can use molten nacl or you can use aqueous naoh from here at cathode the reaction will be this na plus plus e minus that is one electron you will get sodium at anode you are getting 2 cl minus which becomes cl2 plus 2e that's same thing same thing here as well in aqueous naoh as well okay moving on now oh we are done we are almost at, uh, at the end now we have something called as purification or refining so let's see purification or recycling you all know fractional distillation right you have a tower kind of thing where you heat the crude metal and at every different temperature what happens the purified thing comes out the purified substance comes out same thing here also see you are going to take crude zinc which has impurities like iron lead or uh, you know what is this written cadmium this is cadmium not cl cadmium cd cadmium okay at 767 degrees celsius when you heat it cadmium vapors come out you you still have zinc but impurities are iron and lead heated at 920 degrees celsius now you get the zinc vapors zinc vapors are coming out the impurities are still here okay what you are going to do is you take the zinc vapor and then collect them and solidify them you have your metal you have your metal let's understand liquidation what is liquidation metal and impurities they have different melting point that's it metal and the impurities they have different melting points you heat it melt it what will happen the metal the metal has oh especially the metal has a lower melting point okay the metal has a lower melting point than impurities okay lower mp than impurities let's write this this is very important you have to remember it okay now what will happen is so you are going to you are going to add the metal and the ore i mean metal and the impurities basically the ore then what will happen is when you are heating it because this is sloping see this is sloping what will happen is the impurities are probably the impurities are not probably molten yet but however the metal has melted and the metal is getting collected here you get the pure molten metal here and then the impurities are here okay the impurities are here so you are heating it here you are heating it here actually the impurities should not be here the impurities will pretty much be here somewhere here somewhere they'll be sticking they'll be sticking here okay all right so this is what it is now let's understand polling polling does it feel like there is a pole that is utilized here i <laughs> actually yes it is actually yes it is so what you do is you take a metal that has its uh, oxides its impurity as in uh, you take the metal and the oxide of the same metal is only the impurity for example um, plumbum and then pbo is the impurity let's say pbo is the impurity okay so what you're going to do is you take the molten metal and then take a bamboo a green color wood bamboo what you're going to do is you're going to stir it you're going to stir it so this bamboo will provide enough amount of carbon and carbon monoxide and that way you are going to get your metal okay so carbon and the carbon monoxide will also reduce the metal you are going to get your metal here that's it that's it easy right now we have electric refining or electrolytic refining guys you have you have studied this yeah don't you remember anode mud will be here and you know you will get a thin strip of uh, pure metal in the cathode whereas the anode will have uh, you know the anode will have all the other elements here and the anode mud will be here impurities will be here it's just below the anode so it is called as anode mud remember you take acidified copper sulfate solution same thing same thing absolutely the same thing everybody i am hoping that you know it now we move to vapor phase refining in vapor phase refining what you do is take the metal add something to the metal heat it at low temperature you will see that a compound is forming then take the compound heat it at high temperature 
you will see that the metal is getting separated and whatever you have added that is also getting separated out. See what you have taken is titanium 2I2 heated at lower temperature you getting TiI4 okay then heated at high temperature titanium is outside and 2I2 is also separated that's it. When you do it with nickel okay when you do the same thing for nickel it's called as Mons process same thing nickel 4CO heated at low temperature you get NiCO4 heated at high temperature you get nickel out and 4 carbon monoxide also out that's it easy simple now we go for zone refining for zone refining you can do it with silicon germanium or gallium when you need ultra pure metal that's when you use this okay so impurities are highly soluble in molten metal then solid metal they are not molt they are not soluble in solid metal but they are soluble in molten metal so what we are going to do is we are going to take this 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 is this this part is is like the container okay this is the container this has the metal and the impurities this thing that you see the cylindrical thing this is your impurities and metal okay now what you are going to do is you are going to take a ring and heat it take the ring and heat it now when the ring will keep moving from one side to another let's say this side it is moving from here to here when it is moving what will it do this ring will because it is hot it will also keep melting the it will also keep melting all the substances here and when it melts when it melts what will happen the impurities will stick to the ring impurities will stick to the ring and the ring will moving uh, ring will keep moving forward 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 the impurities will keep sticking to the ring okay and that way on the other side you will get recrystallized pure metal you melted it after some time what happens the temperature has fallen down so you get a recrystallized recrystallized pure metal here that's it all right now in your ncrt book you have certain uh, you know uh, certain metals whose extraction is written for example extraction of iron for extraction of iron you are going to take hematite magnetite siderite okay limonite you can take this you go for gravity separation then you get the concentrated ore with SiO2 in small amount you roast it once you get the roasted ore Fe2O3 and small amount of SiO2 smelt it that is carbon reduction then you use a blast furnace and then you are going to get pig iron and you also get a slag here CaSiO3 all the reactions are written here my dear student all the reactions are written here which you can just go through which you can just go through I'm not going to go through it's just going to take a lot of time okay it's very easy since you know all the processes now just go through just read the NCRT a little bit you will understand moving on if we see copper for copper also what we're going to do first we were going to pulverize it crush it grind it froth flotation okay froth flotation then we are going to roast it in reverberatory furnace okay we will get here after roasting smelting we will get Cu2S 3O2 Cu2O this after this right here from here what you do is you take a bessimeter and you bessimerize this okay which is basically self reduction what do you get you after all of these reaction you get 98 to 99 percent copper and 1 to 2 percent impurities which is also called as blister copper still 1 to 2 percent impurity is there how are you going to separate that you are just going to go for electrolytic refining of copper that's it we just understood no? electrolytic refining of copper below anode you have anode mud in the cathode you have the pure thin metal sheet that's all that's all okay all right uh, rest all of these i have already explained you can just go through them you can just go through them let's not waste time here after that what else do we have to understand okay this is this is the beginning of the chapter basically okay this is the beginning of the chapter and here is your bayer's process here is your bayer's process see here is your bayer's process okay you take al2o3.2h2o plus see sodium hydroxide h2o what are you getting you are getting aloh4 plus co2 and then al2o3 xh2o 2 nahco 3 you are again going to get al2o3 dot xh2 take it that's all now uh, okay one one thing that you might ask is but ma'am uh, here you have al2o3 here also you are getting al2o3 what was the point then like you started with the same thing and you ended with the same thing what's the point here you have impurities here you do not have impurities understood when you started it you had impurities here you do not have impurities okay all right everybody now moving on what else do we have what else do we have Achha, zinc yes zinc is remaining for zinc also what you are going to do is first you are going to crush it 
hydraulic washing, froth flotation, roasted and reverberatory furnace, then you are going to get ZNO. Once you get ZNO, reduce it with carbon or carbon monoxide, you are going to get the metal and carbon monoxide or if you, you have taken carbon monoxide, you are going to get carbon dioxide. That's it. And achha, 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 one last thing, one last thing. You also have something called as hall herolds process. Just take a look at this also. Okay, hall herolds process. You take 2Al2O3 plus 3 carbon, you get 4Al plus 3 CO2. Okay, basically carbon is reducing it and you are getting Al. Okay, so in cathode something is happening, anode is something happening. You can just check it out. So that's it. That's it everybody. That's it. The uses are there. The uses are very easy, which I know you all can do it. With this note, everybody, we have come to the end of the metallurgy mind map. I think it was a huge challenge that I did not teach this chapter before and I am teaching it that too in mind map. I have to, I had to shorten it up and uh, teach it in just 30 minutes. I don't know how much time I have taken, but I can guarantee you that uh, all the other sessions that you find based on metallurgy are definitely a little more than one hour, but here this can be, uh, you know, less than one hour. So if you want, you can uh, watch this also at 1.5x and 1.25x and clear your JE exam. This should be enough everybody, okay, just, and we will do, we will do the previous year questions and problem solving as well and you will understand everything. Tara bye bye everybody, I shall see you very, very, very soon. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This is your Vedantu JE English channel where you get all the information about, all the information about JE in English. See y'all, lots of love, bye.